What's going on guys? We're still out here at ROA Off-Road at their Experience Center just south of Salt Lake City, Utah. And we have been looking at these absolutely gorgeous off-road capable, uh, super off-road capable in some cases, travel trailers, towables. These are absolutely beautiful. And we are looking at a brand that I have never heard of before. I mean, until I came out here. This is super cool. Um, I'm gonna let Shane kind of go over what, these, what this brand's all about and uh, some of the manufacturing things, some of the things that have taken place in some of the moves that they've made. But um, before I do that, um, the entrance is on the wrong side, right? Well, no, not necessarily. <laughs> this one's on the rear. But oh, the kitchen okay. is on the wrong side, if that's what you Oh, mean. yeah. I was trying to think. I'm like, where's the door? But the kitchen's on this side. It's the, not on the wrong side. It's just on one of the sides. Yeah, the kitchen is over here, and the uh, the actual door is the rear entry door. Uh, this, this opens up and just gives you storage access to the inside. Oh, that's um, cool. These... These actually have 360 degree awnings. These awnings come out and they wrap around the entire trailer. I can kind of see. Yeah, this one over here, we kind of put one of them out. We just are limited with space and you can see their zippers and Velcro here. So you can actually turn this into an entire enclosed house. A, okay, a yurt that or is whatever. cool. How long does it take to deploy this, this oh, awning? Uh, at least a day or two. No, not really. Oh man, <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> Honestly, it just depends on how much you want to do, but it's going to be an hour probably okay. to, it's a big There's a camp, setup, right? yeah. So like this portion here is minutes, right? What you're seeing right here, the bed popped up, the roof popped up, that's minutes. You, you drive somewhere within 10 or 15 minutes, you're ready to go. If you're going to stay for a week and you want to throw out all the awnings of the walls, it's going to take you some time for setup. Okay. But these these right here, the really cool kitchens. They use the Snowmaster, which is a uh, South African company actually, so Snowmaster. Um, and the Conquerors actually are originally from South Africa as well. They've been in business for almost 30 years. Uh, first, we're making uh, for the military in South Africa, and then they moved into the civilian sector to make campers. Um, but they have some really cool features that you don't see on a lot of trailers. Like, everything is has its place where it lives. Does it come with the silverware? Yep, comes with everything. Oh, that is, that's that really actually cool? a cool little perk. And then it, it does, I mean, and it's nice and tight. If it's open this up, you have your glasses, your uh, wine glasses. <laughs> Every, wow, that is cool. Everything comes in with it. Yeah, I, I've seen this on Earth Roamer, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they probably copied it from Conquer because they've been doing this for almost 30 years. Uh, but yeah, you come in here. You have your hot and cold, and these sinks. You actually have two of these. There's only one right here. So you, have a, you can fill up two different ones, oh, and yeah. you just kind of toss it when you're done. And love these fridges. Very high quality. A lot of storage back here as well. Yeah, and then you have all this area, and you can actually access it from the inside. So if this is your pantry, oh. you got to get your food inside or out um, when you close it up at night. We were gonna mention a little bit about manufacturing. So originally, like 30, 40 years in South Africa, and then recently they've recently moved- Recently they've moved manufacturing over to China, and they're manufacturing out of a plant there. Um, and it, it was very well overseen from the company, right? Like they sent almost their entire staff to China and oversaw it for over mm -hmm. a month, making sure everything was done. They actually took the, the people from China out to Africa to show oh, them wow. how to build it too. And so it was a back and forth. They were worried about the quality. And honestly, the owners say they believe the quality is even better than it was. They're mm -hmm. very precise. So, um, but yeah, I know a lot of people are worried about that. Well, and, and the, the cool thing was, is when we started first shooting out here, the first thing you told me, you were totally open and honest about all of that. You weren't trying to hide where they're manufactured. And I know a lot of people really care about that. Yeah. But at the same time, though, you know, a lot of quality products are manufactured overseas. A lot of them, even the smartphone people are <laughs> likely to comment on, they probably don't know is manufactured in China. And the the more important aspect of it from a quality perspective is the oversight yeah. and what they're paying the manufacturer that's now producing it in China to ensure that they do correctly. Um, would you, from a comparison standpoint between a Chinese made Conqueror to let's say a Black Series, which is also made in China, can you really compare the two in terms of quality? No, no, they're complete. It's a completely different trailer. Like these trailers are, like this is the African trailer that was built. Chinese, uh, the Black Series went through a change from Australia to China to the U.S. and the quality, unfortunately, changed drastically um, over time. 
these these are like if you were to go and see a unit in Africa or in the US they're gonna be very similar it's mm -hmm. the, the components the material and everything is very similar um, they're doing a really really good job and the other thing is it's like the snowmaster refrigerator the components they're they're taught they're very reputable the funny thing is snowmaster actually is manufactured in china as well mm -hmm. nobody knows that mm. they just are like just like your iphone like yeah. you said so um the the price difference is that that's the biggest thing right you're gonna save 30 plus percent if this were to be manufactured in south africa and then shipped over here or in the u.s and purchased here it's just it's a big, it makes it affordable it that, does, that's it the key difference it is it's nice to say I don't want to buy it because it's not manufactured in a certain place, but the reality is, is if it were manufactured, say here, and this unit cost twenty to thirty thousand dollars more because it was manufactured here, you may love that fact, but you may never be able to get it because well, you can't afford it. No, and absolutely, as we go, as we progress through this for the next few days, uh, you're going to see we do have some great stuff that's getting manufactured in the u.s right now but everybody complains about the price they're like it's way more expensive and it's like yeah because it's manufactured here when you're paying labor that's you know a fraction of the cost there's a lot of there's a that's what's gonna happen yep. but this is the rear entry to this these are jerry can holders so you can have extra fuel or water this latches seems like the back end of a uh, of an aircraft Okay, so we got the whole hatch open. You have your what is this here on the side? This is uh, this is your water heater. Okay. Of course, fire extinguisher. This is crazy cool. Like I said, it's like it's like boarding an aircraft from the back. It's really fun. This is cool inside. I mean, I wasn't. Ex I honestly, I didn't know what to expect when I saw this from the outside because it has all sorts of peaks to the roof. It. It's very different. Yeah, and this is actually one of the things, very, very minimalistic, right? Uh, this is Velcroed, but this, look how big this storage is. This this is my entire arm length, right? This yeah. Is, this is a massive storage space. Um, I was really worried about like this Velcro and zipper thing, but nothing comes out. And also the weight reduction is gonna mm -hmm. be substantial with this, right? You have a little TV, you have more storage there all the way down. I mentioned earlier, this storage space, that's the other yeah, side. Yeah, this is the other side. Yeah, I'll get this one down. Oh yeah, so if you close that up, this is like interior storage now. Yeah, and then you have two large beds they don't they're wow. not a they're not a true dimension of anything like a queen but they're there's it's about a you could call it an rv queen. yeah yeah it's about the size of an rv queen a little shorter yep. but not too bad lights everywhere too lots of little hidden storage compartments oh too. wow so check this out this is going to be kind of a, a crawl from this part right here you might think man if you're sleeping there you're going to hit your head but check this out you cross this threshold and you have this really, really cool area back here. This is where the kids would love to hang out and play. That is super cool. Kids would go crazy. Yes, this is absolutely <laughs> cool. Now, a lot of people might say lighting, but look, all of these unzip to reveal more of these really nice little screened areas. Yeah, and you do have lights right here. We're just turned off right yep. now, the power. And you have outside, inside, you have lights on the awning that light up. So a lot of good lighting, but the other thing is, it's it's when you're off grid and off road it's always you want battery is everything right mm -hmm. battery consumption now these do come with solar as well um they're briefcase ones that you set out and mm -hmm. plug in um so you they're made for off grid yep check this out too all your circuit breakers solar charge controller you got your stereo down there got your switch panels over here you got nice little zipper windows going around all of this and you do have lights down right above the beds. Oh yeah. And lights there and on the inside the other one too. This is really cool. This again, this gives you that base camp experience, but in a whole different way. Very, very cool. This also is a screen door, so you can just Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's cool. It kind of radius is its way down. Yeah. And you got, again, the storage right here. Okay, stepping back out, all LED lighting back here. Massive structure here to support the, the tire. Off-road tire swings out of the way, of course. 
He says that all of this material, it's all anodized aluminum. Just check out the stabilization legs that come down here. This is really, really cool. This is the UEV 440. There's the pop-up section. Yeah, everything just really screams of quality, to be honest with you. Very cool. And Shane, what is the, uh, what's the weight on this unit? This one is 3,700 pounds dry weight. Okay, and um, rough cargo capacity on something like this? Uh, this one is going to be just over 1,000 pounds okay. of cargo. So you can tow this with a lot of stuff. You could tow this with... Like a Tacoma almost, Yeah, right? Tacoma or like maybe even like a Ranger or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Gladiator would do great too. This, I uh, want to point this out because this is something that Conquer does. This is a positive air pressure system. So it actually sucks in air down here and there's uh -huh. a filter. And so it goes in there and pushes air into the cabin. So if you're hitting like a dirt road with fine dirt, you can't come in is because it's pushing the air out. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. It's very common in Australia. You also have lights up here, right up there. And then you have lights in here too. These awnings also, these little guys are lights. Those are kind of like oh, wow. ambient lights. Yeah. You know, one thing that, that you had mentioned to me earlier that's worth noting is that this brand has been around longer than just about any other off-road brand, including brands like Patriot that people automatically associate with Australia. Yeah. Um, would you say that even Patriot has probably taken some of the ideas from a brand like this possibly? Well, I sell them, so I don't want to say anything that might offend them. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> but, that's but, true. But I, I, I think a lot of people have derived inspiration from the Conquer brand. I, I'm sure Patriot has, and I'm sure all of the off-road stuff in Australia. I know for sure, like the American brands, mm -hmm. a lot of them like kind of look at this and are inspired by what they've been doing. Yep. So now a few things. Let's talk about the suspension on this unit. Oh, so this is actually really cool. This is unique from what we saw on the other stuff we've been touring. This is an air suspension. It's an it's a, a independent suspension with control arms, uh, but it has gas shocks with air bags. As we walk around, he he wanted to show me this. They got a hatchet. Yeah. That's mounted to the front. Yeah, exactly. So, and you do have a good amount of storage throughout here too. Let me get around this side. I got bad shadows right now. Oh, sorry. Okay. So this is this is this this is airbag man, and as you can see, it has a tank in here. And then that pumps up and then you can control right or left your tires from side to side. And this is great for off-roading because the airbags are amazing off-road, but also for leveling when you get to camp. Yeah, that is super cool. And it also has an air air um, outlet too, so you can pump up your oh, tires yeah. if you ever air down. Has the front articulating coupler as well. You got some storage up here. Oh, this is your propane. propane tanks, okay. Yep. 220 pound, I'm guessing. Yeah. Got your on-demand water heater right there. Yeah, and then you have the ports. These are your Anderson ports where you plug in your solar. Okay. And you can drop your solar out. What's and back this here? This is an air conditioning heater and a little bit of space. So okay. Yeah, yeah. Space for storage. And this is where your poles go. This is a really long. You can put some long stuff in there. Very cool. All right. So we got suspension going on back here. Let's try to get to it from the back, I suppose. All right, it is kind of hard to see, but he's going to lift up the the exit or entry ramp. Okay, I see a shock absorber, and I see an airbag. Yeah, it's above kind of tuck, it. tucked away in there. Yeah, it is. Very clean, though. This is one of my favorite things about um, Conquer is they have this. This is their stabilizer jack. Look at this. Yeah, that is cool. And then there's a pin and it, and it just locks right in there. So when you get to camp, you just pull that out and you'll just find the right spot and it actually will lift the entire trailer. That's too, a little bit too high. That is really cool. Right, cool. Very innovative. Opposed, opposed to like those little cranks yeah. and you're like sweating. No, that is absolutely cool. And then they tuck up right out of the way when you're off-roading. You can see the departure on these are just Yeah, phenomenal. crazy departure because of that angle right there. Yeah, and the airbags are in the lowest position. They have over six inches of travel when you lift them all the way up. So I got to ask you, uh, 
a scale of one to 10, one being least off-road capable, 10 being the most extreme off-road capable with, uh, with, I know we've been referencing Ember as being kind of like that mass produced middle of the line. Yeah, maybe let's say an Ember is like a 3.5, three to 3.5. Where would you number this one? Uh, this one's definitely gonna get up there probably in that nine. Wow. Eight and a half to nine. Uh, I mean, once the tires lift up, your tires are a foot away from the back of the trailer. So your departure is like non-existent almost. So it's, these are scary off-road capable. Yeah, yeah. Like you, your truck, if you get yourself in a position that actually makes you worry about if this is capable of getting out, <laughs> your truck's not gonna be able to get out. Yeah, your truck is gonna be, I would say you're limiting more times than not, your limiting factor of where you can go will be your actual tow vehicle, not the trailer. Yep, so that is crazy. But super cool though. Price range on this, I'm gonna give a guess. Uh, we've been playing this little game where I try to come up with a price that I think this probably falls in, within the ballpark of, and he corrects me. So it's very small, but it's built incredibly well. Uh, South African brand, manufactured in China, but still to their levels of excellence. I'm gonna guess, it's a tough one because I just absolutely have no idea. And because it's smaller than some of the other ones, um, my mind's right there. So I'm gonna say 55. That's actually pretty good. So it, I, I think the list on it right now is around 55. Okay. I, I think the four, this is a 440 and we've been, just check out our website. We have everything listed, yeah. but they're around 44 to 50 is what okay. we've been selling something for, so. Okay, so no, and, and I'm trying to adjust my pricing to be more in line with other things we've already looked at. So well, that's why I came on that. Similar trailers like this that are manufactured in Australia, mm -hmm. you're gonna see them anywhere from 60 to 80 grand, right? Yeah. Bruder is a very iconic one and it's similar in size. And you're gonna be pushing over a hundred grand for a Bruder, right? Yeah. Um, so the fact that you can get this under 50 is the only reason is because of where it's manufactured. If it was manufactured in South Africa still, you would probably be well over 60, 70,000 plus gotcha. for this guy. Very cool. Well, I appreciate it. We have more to look at. We have another one right here we're going to take a look at next, which has a, which has a whole different kind of interior to it. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. Right. And it actually has an entry exit door on the side. So. We'll be back. Guys, uh, real, real quick, do you want to go ahead and plug your oh, yeah. website? Um, check us out. And for full tours, we do over hour long tours on our YouTube channel and it's ROA Off-Road. We also do a bunch of adventures, crazy. We're testing these, using them, putting them to their, you know, the max testing that we can. Yep. Very cool. And it's cool that you guys do that here in, in Utah and in Moab and in, you know, surrounding areas. So they're doing it here in the States where you guys might very well travel if you got something like this. Yeah. Anyways, guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to our channels, give us a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.